We have Queen AC here with us, GMB Queen 2015. We're going to be spending some much needed quality time with her this evening. Now, Ghanaians are fast approaching the polls. December 2024 is upon us. So we're turning our focus to some of these matters that certainly concern you and I. Now, if you know Ghana, you know that in the last 30 years or so, the political space has been dominated by two main parties. The NDC, that's the National Democratic Congress, and the NPP, the New Patriotic Party. For many, it's time, they say, to break that duopoly, enter or bring in some fresh energy so we can change the fortunes of Ghana. If you agree, if you disagree, do let us know. The hashtag is the Lady Circle. We love hearing all of your views, your thoughts, your questions, even your suggestions. They're absolutely welcome. We'll be delving into this issue of a third force. Is it necessary? What should we be looking out for if we're introducing a third force into the country? And luckily, Queen Essie is here, also lawyer by day, GMB <laughs> queen, by, by, by everyone, by everywhere. By everywhere. <laughs> queen, this is yeah. something that um, has, I think, gained a lot more momentum, mm -hmm. especially as we head to the polls. Yeah. But it's worth noting that Ghana is not the only country uh, that has a strong geopoly. I mean, even the advanced democracies that we, you know, seek to emulate, mm -hmm. you'll find have, you know, long-standing geopolies that um, take turns or say, shall I say, share power mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the ruling of, of a country. We have that here in Ghana, the NDC and the NPP. Are you one of those Ghanaians who say, we are tired of the NPP and the NDC, <laughs> the Awahala. It's time for a third force to penetrate the space, to give us fresh policies, um, to bring about accountability and so on and so forth. You're right. I'm one of the proponents of a third force new energy within the political space. And so people know me to belong to the Afro Frontier team. Mm. Okay. That's, yes, I'm an Alanite mm -hmm. because I believe... You are an, an Alanite. An Alanite. Oh, I like okay. that one. Okay. Alan. Alanite. Alanite. Okay, yes. okay, okay. And so for the past 32 years, from 1992, we've had NBC and MPP taking turns in ruling the country. Mm. But then the question is, are Ghanaians satisfied? Are Ghanaians being properly taken care of? Mm -hmm. No, mm. that is the answer. So what then, how do we move forward? How mm. do we proceed? What we need now is a new energy, is a third force mm. to break the duopoly so that at least we can have some uh, little bit of uh, releasing the tension that has built up for the past 32 years amongst the two political parties. Mm. So I believe it is time for change and change is imminent. Would you say that brewing tensions are the only reasons why Ghanaians should maybe be thinking about a third force. What are some of the reasons why you think we should critically be examining who we give a power to? Okay, um, the tension is one factor. Mm. And also it's about the needs of Ghanaians. As we're speaking now, you go to the villages, you go to the cities, you go to the small towns, you pick any crop of youth, you ask them, what do you want? Is one answer, we need jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are unemployed. Yeah. What is the government, I mean, what is the government doing about the creation of jobs for the youth, for the teaming youth? You know, the youth constitute about 70% of the population, in fact, That's the right. voter population. Mm -hmm. So if your youth are mostly unemployed, then where are we heading towards? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who takes accountability for taking care of the youth? Mm -hmm. So I believe that unemployment and then the failure of government in um, 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 implementing and executing their policies and their projects within their manifesto is also one major issue that uh, is concerning Ghanaians mm -hmm. and that calls for the new force or a new change within our political system. Okay. Interestingly, yeah. because you said the new force, mm -hmm. I don't know whether you meant literally <laughs> the new force because, or is there going to be a coalition, a far fronter? The Afro Fronto ah, Force. Is that possible? The Afro Fronto already has an alliance okay. with some members of the CPP. Mm. Oh, we okay. have some members from the PNC. Mm. Uh, okay. As we speak now, we have uh, Dr. Abu Sakara. Mm -hmm. He was a former flag bearer of the CPP. That's right. We have um, uh, the former uh, PNC national chairman, uh, the former national vice chairman. We have about 10 smaller parties who have uh, created this alliance with Honorable Alan Kwejo Chumateng. Mm. Because yeah. looking at the political jurisprudence we found ourselves now, you going as one person without a solid support system, 
it will be very difficult to break the duopoly. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the NDC, the MPP, they already have their structures. That's right. They already have their systems. Uh, they are grassroots. They are their beck and call. And they also, they, they, they have the... They have the... They have the... Yeah. They have the... They've been, they've been I mean, let's for the past let, 32 let's years. When it yes. comes to a they fair have force, the money. you know, you, you need the money because in you order do. to sell your message mm -hmm. to the people of Ghana, you, we have to hear it. Yes. You have to go up, have you to have to go it. down, you have to yeah. go east, you have to go west. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that I agree with you. They have the structures, but they also have the, the funds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would not disagree that you need the money. Mm. Of course, we need the money because yeah. we'll be going out campaign. You need to satisfy some people, mm. at least with water, when you hold, when you hold rallies and all that, yeah. transportation and yeah. all that. Yeah. But then during a time like this, I call it a time of a mental revolution. Right. It's about the message to the people. Mm -hmm. The people do not really care about the money you give them. People have not seen the political tricks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They wait eight years, four years, they come, they give you small money, vote for them, and then they are out. You will not see them. Some of the MPs, you don't even see them in their constituencies. Mm -hmm. Some of them are based in Accra, and they go occasionally visit their constituents. So the people are woke. Mm -hmm. That's what our MPs and mm -hmm. then the, uh, all the presidential aspirants should, should know. The right. people are woke. Mm -hmm. The people are ready for a change. It is not about collecting money. Mm -hmm. It's about the message which resonates with the people. What do the people need now? How do you solve their problems now? Mm. So people are saying, we will take their money, mm -hmm. we will chop their money, but mm -hmm. we will vote against them. I just hmm. want to know, before these alliances were formed, do you okay. all originally belong to a political Different party? Political some parties, belong so. to the NPP, some to the NDC. Yes. And the problems we are facing now existed back then, mm -hmm. and they still exist now. If the differences were not made then, how do we trust that you guys will be able to make the difference now? Okay, um, for the past 32 years, as I said early on, mm -hmm. the MPP, the NDC have mm -hmm. been taking their turns. Mm -hmm. And we believe that, we believe that uh, it is high time we got a new person, mm -hmm. a different energy, mm -hmm. who will be in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, the NPP like and DS, show? yes, mm -hmm. the NPP and DS towards uh, the conservatives, they are conservatives, they are the mm -hmm. center right. Mm -hmm. the, the NDC, they are the center left, they are mm -hmm. social democrats. Mm -hmm. But then to what extent are their ideologies um, resonating with the people? Mm -hmm. Ghanaians have outgrown some ideologies. Mm. We've outgrown some things, yeah. and they should know. Mm. I was born in 1992. I didn't come and meet the coup, mm -hmm. and I'm sure yeah. some of you too didn't meet the coup. Yeah. All we saw was J.J. Rawlings mm -hmm. as a democratically elected president. Yeah. Mm. So some of the history leading to some of the things that happened in the past, we do not know. Mm -hmm. But then this is our time. Yeah. We are facing current challenges. Mm -hmm. The world is growing. That's right. It is the current problem that we need to address. What is the current problem? What are the current needs of the people? Okay. That is what is calling for the new energy. That's mm -hmm. the new or the third force. Right. And probably an independent candidate yeah. or a smaller political party that mm -hmm. is strong enough with enough gravitas to penetrate into yeah. the system. Mm. Now, I mean, you made mention of quite a number of things when you were answering the, the question before. You know, you spoke about the fact that for the NDC and NPP, it's something that is deeply rooted. So yes, that they have their structure Exactly. Sex. I mean, for some people, once you're born into the family, you don't even have the time to choose. You're, mm -hmm. you know, for your born into NDC, you have to be an NDC um, person. Also, we also consider the you know funds that um, come with that. Would you say that you know, or would you advise that? For a third force, especially for a time like this where we're trying to, first of all, break the NDC MPP, all the others should come together as one to, first of all, break that. And then that sort of opens up for any other person to come. Or, you know, because we've still, we've still seen quite a number of people doing independence. We've seen about quite a number of them. And some yeah. came before. They're not here now and all of those. So talking about the, the weight of, you know, being a political party and even breaking through, would you advise that, First of all, let's come together and get an entire third force first, break through, and then we see w w what happens after. Yes, I believe that uh, because as it stands now, for my movement, we are in a coalition yeah. or in alliance with other with, political yeah. parties, mm -hmm. and we are 11 now. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe that in order to penetrate into the system, we will need a strong team. Mm -hmm. We need a strong movement, a stronger voice. Mm -hmm. uh, because looking at MPP and NDC, they're already set. Mm -hmm. They have the money. Yeah. And normally during election, people throw out money and people buy into it. They, mm. they get the money, they take the money, and then they vote for them. Mm. So in order for you to be able to break these two, who are deeply rooted in our political system, you will need a different, um, how do you call it, a different strategy. Mm. 
you can't use the strategy the MPP is using. Mm -hmm. And you can't use the strategy the NDC is using. Yeah. They are going to beat you in their own game. So you have to come up with your own strategy that they will not be able to even understand how you're operating. Mm -hmm. So that calls for the coalition. So that one person holds here, the other person holds here, one person holds here, one person is in Kumasi, another mm -hmm. team is in Accra, another team in Volta, another party is in the central region. Mm -hmm. Everybody is working at where they, they, they can really, uh, they have their people and where they have their strong force over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe that uh, we need that coalition, we need that alliance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of strategy, what does the Afrofrontor manifesto have for women, children, and the youth? Are there any interesting highlights in there that would be of great benefit to um, yes. the women, children, and the youth? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, for the Afrofrontor, we believe that Ghanaians have outlived and out have, uh, have outgrown manifestos mm, okay. for the past okay. 32 years. Yeah. All we are doing is manifesto, manifesto, mm -hmm. manifesto. Mm. Manifestos are mere promises. Mm. They are only aspirational. As to how they will be able to achieve them, nobody knows. Mm. Yeah. So an aspirant comes up, he thinks about something with a political party. We will do this, we will do this and that. Mm. How are you going to do that? Mm. That is the problem. How are we going to do the house in achieving those policies, mm. in changing the lives of Ghanaians? Mm. We have not had it. So Honorable Alan Chamatin and the movement has come up with a great transformational plan. Mm -hmm. We believe that we need a plan. As mm -hmm. a nation, we don't need manifesto. Right. The policies in those uh, manifestos, mm -hmm. we need to plan on how we're going to execute them, nice. on how we're going to implement them, on mm -hmm. how we're going to change the lives of Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. So when you take the great transformational plan, it's, uh, we have into uh, six uh, clusters, mm -hmm. each and every cluster tackling a particular thematic area within uh, uh, the Ghanaian society. Okay. So for the Ghanaian youth, what do we uh, propose? What is Alan proposing? Mm. Alan is the proponent of the one district, one factory. Mm. Right. Yes, he's a proponent of one district, one factory. Mm. And the one district, one factory policy was to elevate the, 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 the unemployment rate within the youth. Mm. Because just imagine, if every constituency has one district, one factory, it will reduce unemployment totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Alan is promising the teaming youth that I introduce this um, a, a policy. Mm -hmm. But because the executive uh, power does not belong to me, the executive power in the constitution belongs to the president. He and wasn't the driver. He wasn't the driver. <laughs> He's not even the mate. Well, I can't even say the he was the, the passenger. Uh, yes, maybe he, he was <laughs> sweeping like the, middle, the station. The yes, or he was selling yogurt <laughs> in the station. Mm. So with him as a minister of trade, mm -hmm. he cannot implement it unless he gets that executive that authority cool. yeah. and the executive backing. Mm. So what will he do? If you have a plan, if you propose a plan to your president mm -hmm. and he's not implementing it, he's not ready, he doesn't buy into your ideology. Mm -hmm. He moved out, he stepped out. Now this is what I'm proposing to Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Vote me into power and let's implement it. At least it will solve one major challenge facing the team in youth. Mm -hmm. And Honorable Alan Chamati is also proposing that uh, as SHS leavers, mm -hmm. fresh uh, senior high school leavers, yeah. we don't need to let them sit in the house. We need to... Um, make them, uh, uh, how do you call it? We have to make them gain, either gainfully employed or make them busy. How do you make them busy? He's introducing a national apprenticeship program. Mm. I learned they used to do that in the past. After mm -hmm. SS, you don't sit in the house. Mm -hmm. You are absorbed into the system. Yeah. You go and work until one year, then you know your left and right. You know exactly the course or the profession you want, you to, want do. to do. Mm -hmm. So as an SS lever, if you studied medicine, mm and you want to be a nurse, or uh, if you studied uh, science, mm -hmm. and you want to be a nurse, you want to be a doctor, they take you to the hospital mm. so that you study how doctors conduct their, 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 their work, wow. how nurses conduct their work. Mm. If you want to be a teacher, we take you to the classroom. Mm -hmm. You want to study the teachers. If you want to be a lawyer, if you want to be a judge in the future, we take you to the courts or to the firms. You start learning. If you want to be accountant, we take you to accounting firms. If you want to be a civil servant, we take you into the ministries and all those offices so that you understand how it takes to become what you want to become in future. Mm -hmm. So for that one year that you are under the apprenticeship program as an SS leaver, mm -hmm. you are learning, right. you are gaining an experience. So after that one year, you know exactly what you want to go and do into the university, at the university. Some people may change their minds along the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some may decide to proceed with the vision that they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, Alan promises that as a youth for the senior high school leavers, and you know one thing, he says, 
He's one of the proponents of the senior high school, the free senior high school. Oh, okay. Some people were debating whether it's good or not. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Mm -hmm. What we need is a stronger implementation and execution mm -hmm. and then a review because uh, after seven to eight years, there, there's never been a review. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are some hiccups and challenges. So when he comes, he will review the SHS and then execute it properly mm -hmm. so that we all can benefit. Mm -hmm. Because okay. as it stands now, parents take their children to the senior high schools and they have to make some payments. Mm -hmm. It is not free. As it looks, mm -hmm. the free. free is not free. Mm -hmm. Yes. To some extent, the free becomes moot. Some yeah. people will be paying 3000 4000 to do some things. Yes. So then where lies the free? Mm -hmm. So Alan is a proponent of the free SHS. So for our little brothers in the, senior, in the junior high school, he's advising, we're advocating that you learn very hard so that when he comes, he will help you with the, senior, the free senior high school. Mm -hmm. And as I said, with the free, uh, the, the national apprenticeship program for the senior high school leavers, nobody's going to sit in the house. Mm -hmm. The ladies with the cocoa Pemi and the, <laughs> the gentleman with the Tofesta and the yeah, Rasta yeah. roaming about, regulating the little girls. Mm -hmm. No, you'll be busy yeah. unless you don't want to be busy, mm -hmm. unless you don't want to be productive. Mm -hmm. And this helps you reduce, reduce the unemployment rate mm -hmm. right. because nobody's going to sit in the house. The Galam say that we have so many youth who are in there. It's going to be reduced. There will mm. be a reduction in the rate, of the, uh, the, uh, the rate with which youth engage in Galam say because they are somewhere working. Mm. And then when it comes to um, our professionals, mm -hmm. Alan promises that as a professional, some, uh, some people like the teachers, we learned some uh, presidential aspirants are claiming that they are going, they are going to cancel the, the teacher lines, license or uh, mm -hmm. license seizure mm -hmm. exams. exams. He yeah. believes that we don't need to cancel it. Mm -hmm. But it helps in shaping the profession. Yeah. You know, for the lawyers, we have the bar. Yeah, the, right. the doctors, they have their medical, uh, whatever, whatever. So mm -hmm. we need it. Mm -hmm. And he wants to um, 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 strengthen all these systems so that right. we absorb the youth. We make our youth busy, mm -hmm. right. positively. Mm -hmm. yes. I want to ask uh, Queen AC, what do you think um, a third force needs to do to, one, be more visible so the Ghanaian people can actually see what this third force has uh, to offer and also how um, can a, a potential third force gain the trust of Ghanaians? I think that's where we are at the moment. Yeah, we okay. simply cannot trust yes. official doms. So because yeah. of that lack of trust, even when they are emerging, you know, parties that are springing up, mm -hmm. I can see that the average Ghanaian is kind of yeah, hesitant yeah, to, to yeah. embrace mm -hmm. a third force. What is lacking? You know, is it that um, let's say, I mean, I, I, from where I sit, I can see that the Afrofrontal movement has that confidence because of uh, the personality of Alan Tremantin, who's been in the political space yes. um, and is some, some would describe a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of that third force, generally, what is lacking? What should, you know, we be thinking about? Yes, I think uh, for the past uh, 32 years, in the fourth, within the Fourth Republic, the independents and the smaller political parties who could have uh, become uh, the third force, the stronger third force that we're looking for, are not that dominant. Mm -hmm. Normally, they appear to be marginal, mm. getting 1%, 2%. You don't mm -hmm. even see them mm -hmm. until election. Yeah. Most yeah. of them, you don't hear anything about yeah. them until election. Yeah. So it's always the conversation, the narrative. It's always about the MPP, the NDC, the MPP, the NDC, the duopoly. So that has been the problem. We've not had a dominant candidate springing out from yeah. the smaller parties yeah. or independent uh, uh, movements. Yeah. But then this time around, as you mentioned, uh, Honorable Alan John Chamartin, he has been in the political system for long. Yeah. Mm. He's a dominant candidate. Alan Cash is a household name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alan you Cash. won't believe it. <laughs> we, I, I personally, I, I, I like going to the villages because mm. I started growing up from the village, the smaller town. So I go there. And you realize that people endear to Alan Cash. Mm. They know the name Alan Cash. They, 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 they remember who Alan Cash was. Mm -hmm. Some of Rebecca, Papa and Home for Fair Fair. Yes. <laughs> so Alan Cash is a household name. Yeah. Right. Alan Cash is a dominant candidate. Unlike previous uh, candidates who were just uh, uh, moving about under G, doing their oath and under G. Mm -hmm. No, Alan has been the police. He's been a trade minister under Kufo's government. Mm -hmm. And under his government, he pioneered the National Friday Wear. The National Friday were. Right. He, yes, it was his policy. And then as a, as a listening father, as uh, President Kufo was, he listened and then he brought that policy to help reduce the unemployment rate within the, uh, uh, the textiles, the fashion industry. Mm. Alan introduced Maslock, uh, which is something to empower market women. Mm. Alan introduced the Presidential Special Initiative as a minister. 
Alan introduced what you call the Empretec to help local businesses. Mm. So someone like this, he's made his name locally, internationally. In the year 1994, when, after the apartheid, when Nelson Mandela was looking for some prominent people to help build the South, South African black economy, mm -hmm. he needed seven people. You won't believe Alan was the only black man who was called. Mm. Wow. So he was in Nelson Mandela's uh, country in South Africa in 1994 to help build the black economy. So you go to South Africa, you are happy about what is going there. You have a Ghanaian input over there. Mm. In the year 1994, Time Magazine in the UK listed 100 people as their world global leaders. Mm. And within African countries, Alan was the only person who was selected wow. for the wow. millennium. Yes, that they're expecting somebody like him in the next future to become a leader within his uh, country. So Alan, as I mentioned, is a dominant, he's not a marginal candidate. But so, so, so it's, Queen, I think with regards to, to Alan, because he's such a powerhouse, I think that's also helped um, with the visibility. Would you say that the media maybe doesn't help platform some of these alternative Absolutely. views? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's one of our main challenges. Mm. We believe that the media is also playing along the duopoly. Mm. For some time now, we're not even getting space on, yeah. on radio shows, mm. on talks. Until you, until you, you until we fought. Until, until, until Media General stepped until, up and decided <laughs> to platform all of the relevant parties here. Mm. And until listen, the Afar Frontier because, Movement yes, is no stranger yes, yes, to our yes, MG yes, platforms. Yes, yes. I mean, you're Honorable here. Honorable Hoxing, I mean, we have they, Courage, they Nobi, yes, and the courage, like. They're yes, always yes, here. Yes, we know yes, them yes, by their name. But would you say the wider, those who are not Media General, would you say they are not doing what they need to do to really platform? They should learn from TV thing, Thank they you. should learn from Onya TV, yeah. they should learn Thank from General. Thank you, from you should FM. open up. You should open up. We need change. Mm. It's not always about MPP on NDC. Mm. The political dynamics have changed. Who would ever believe that uh, in Ghana we will have uh, a speak of parliament mm. coming from the minority? Mm. It has never happened. Yes. But here we are today. Mm -hmm. it, nearly Alan... didn't, it nearly didn't happen. Those <laughs> yes. who saw the, 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 the <laughs> Someone's the their box and all that. <laughs> but then it happened. Mm. People fought. Yeah. You, we got some people from the MPP who voted for uh, Alban Babin. Mm. His people voted for him. So this should tell, mm. this should suggest to us that yeah. people are ready for change. Yeah. It's about a matter of time, and mm. we believe the time is now. Mm. Okay, well, it sounds as if the Afro Fronton movement, they want to fly here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> they certainly want your votes. Have you had a chance to check out the great transformational plan? Do let us know again. It's hashtag the Lady Circle. We're going on a very, very quick break. When we come back, there's more excitement, more good conversation, and a lot more fun right here on the Lady Circle.